Welcome back to the JX. I'm Angela Decker. The nonprofit Project Hope assists healthcare workers in global hotspots during wars and disease outbreaks. The work also includes seeing to the mental health needs of healthcare workers in those places. We'll learn more on this edition of Mental Health Matters. Hello, hope you're doing well today. We're listening to Mental Health Matters on Jefferson Exchange with the Jefferson Public Radio and NAMI Southern Oregon. I'm Andra Hollenbeck with NAMI, the National Alliance on Mental Illness in Southern Oregon. When we talk about health, we cannot discuss complete health without talking about our mental health. On this program, we highlight mental health issues in our community and the world and ways we can improve mental health for everyone. Today, we're discussing mental health for healthcare providers with Rawan Hamadeh. Uh, Rawan is the program officer for Project Hope's global mental health initiative worldwide. She joined Project Hope in 2020 as and is experienced in humanitarian assistance and systems reform in her many previously held roles in the UN and other international agencies. Good morning, Rowan. Good morning. Thank you so much for joining us on the on the program today. So, would you tell us first a bit about yourself and and how you came to be such a strong advocate for mental health? Thank you so much for, for having me and for the opportunity to uh, talk about mental health, to raise awareness about mental health, and to talk about uh, our program at Project Hope. So uh, my name is Rawan, as you mentioned, and it's, I'm originally from Lebanon, uh, so a country full of crisis. So this is where I started with uh, the, my career at the humanitarian assistance field. And uh, mental health was not something uh, talked about or was not prioritized uh, in the health system in Lebanon. So with a lot of uh, support from uh, international stakeholders, I started uh, with uh, focusing on mental health in Lebanon. And this is how uh, I was able to build my experience in mental health advocacy and management of uh, mental health uh, activities that led me to my role uh, at Project Hope. Yeah, so go ahead and tell us about um, Project Hope. It sounds like a, a great program. So Project Hope is a global health nonprofit organization. We also have emergency response activities. One of our priorities and our mission statement actually is uh, placing the power in the hands of healthcare workers to save lives across the globe. So prioritizing mental health of healthcare workers was very essential uh, to our mission. And uh, we started with the implementation of the mental health and resilience training uh, program as a response to COVID-19 pandemic. And it, we prepared this uh, training curriculum that includes multiple modules to talk about the mental well-being of uh, healthcare workers, to talk about the stress and the trauma they've been uh, experiencing during the pandemic, before the pandemic, and now. Uh, in the aftermath of the pandemic. And it provides healthcare workers and participants with technical skills, tools, techniques, self-care, coping strategies to help them uh, maintain their mental well-being and build their resilience. This training has been implemented since 2020. We're in like 43 different countries across the globe. We're also implementing this training in the U.S. with the support of multiple local health stakeholders. And so far, we've reached a bit more than 100,000 healthcare workers internationally. That's amazing. And so so why is it particularly important? And maybe what are some of the, the concerns that, that this program addresses? Why is a mental health for healthcare workers an important thing to address in the first place? Mental health in general, not specifically for healthcare workers, is a, it's very common. So mental health conditions mm-hmm. are very common. They're on the rise globally. And the rate in the U.S. is one to five adults living with mental health conditions. Mm-hmm. So that's around 47 million Americans. So it's very common, but it's also treatable. Like treatments are available, they're effective. And just like physical health, the earlier you seek treatment, And the more you focus on preventative measures, the better the prognosis is. So I would say the silver lining of COVID-19, to be honest, is shedding the light on the mental well-being of our healthcare workers. Mm -hmm. So healthcare workers were seen as heroes because of all the challenges they were going Mm -hmm. through while being at the front uh, line of the fight against uh, the pandemic. So... 
COVID came, we realized that the mental well-being of healthcare workers is something to prioritize because if we don't take care of our healthcare workers, who will be taking care of us? Recently, the U.S. Uh, Surgeon General published an advisory, I think it was late 2022, addressing specifically the burnout levels mm. of the healthcare workers and the health workforce in, uh, in the States and the impact of the stress on their well-being, and eventually how much it's going to be a strain on our overall health system mm -hmm. because our our shortage, like we're projecting shortage of doctors and nurses at really high rates. So not addressing this issue and not really uh, investing in building initiatives to support their mental health and to increase their resilience is going to be detrimental to our overall health system. We are, it impacts a, a shortage that we always already have. I heard you talk about your training, and I want to talk about that a little bit more, too, about what the components are. But first, when you when you introduce this idea of bringing in uh, mental health for healthcare workers uh, and training, wh what kind of obstacles or particular challenges do you have to address when, when trying to um, implement some of these programs? Basically, and the, the biggest challenge that we have is their busy schedule. Um. So, you know, healthcare workers, they barely have any time to take care of themselves. Mm -hmm. And they're always, they're always busy with uh, a lot of workload on their plate. Like asking them to take a bit of time off to do something for themselves, they're not used to it. Right. So, and, and I've actually heard multiple times, and I think it's, this is like a testimonial for the success of this program, that uh, healthcare workers are used to attend training like patient-centered training mm -hmm. for them to take care of their patients. And this is one of the very few moments where they're taking time to take care of themselves, mm -hmm. to learn things, to support their own uh, their own health. Right. Yeah, I think the, the timing and the scheduling of uh, healthcare workers to be able for them to take time off is one of the challenges. Yeah. Yeah, so ha helping bring the idea that it's it, it is a really important thing to invest in for both themselves mm -hmm. and their patients and the system in its entirety. Thank you. So you are listening to Mental Health Matters on the Jefferson Exchange. I'm Andra Hollenbeck of NAMI Southern Oregon, speaking with Rowan Hamade about mental health and uh, resilience for healthcare workers. So I, I'd like to bring it a little more locally and and like to this sounds like a great program and I want to talk about our local area a little bit we we don't have a, a war <laughs> we don't have those huge things we do have our wildfire challenges we it, the pandemic definitely affected our healthcare system and and right now we're we're struggling with um, kind of a fentanyl crisis so all of these things impact practitioners I guess I want to know what kind of the components of your program are and what kind of ideas we could offer um, healthcare practitioners to address mental health issues that they, that they might come across. So uh, the training includes multiple modules. We start by introducing stress and trauma and how our body is impacted by not necessarily disasters, so even regular day-to-day -day, uh, stress, mm -hmm. yeah. and how we respond to those stressful situations, whether cognitively, emotionally, behaviorally, physically, and all of the different responses to those stressful situations. Mm -hmm. We discuss uh, loss and grief heavily because, you know, healthcare workers, they're exposed to loss of patients. Uh, even like during COVID, they've experienced losses of colleagues, of family members. So we talk about loss and grief a lot. And uh, what are the common trauma, trauma reactions? So just so they can link it to their own reactions or the symptoms that they've been going through. And we also uh, provide uh, tools and techniques of stress management. How do we support ourselves? How do we support others? What are the healthy versus unhealthy coping strategies to be more mindful about our strategies? More self-care tips and tricks and techniques how to seek support in case it's needed, when to seek support, what are the obstacles of, of getting help because, you know, we have a lot of stigma around uh, seeking mm -hmm. support, especially when it comes to healthcare workers. Like, they're supposed to be the service provider and, and they're supposed to be taking care of others. It's a bit harsher for them to acknowledge that they need support themselves mm -hmm. and to actually uh, seek support. We also have a big component of this training talking about the importance of resilience training or the importance of mental health initiatives at the workplace. 
So it's not only an individual effort, it's also to put it on the shoulders of the organizations themselves that you should be doing the work as well. You should be uh, working on developing your own mental health initiatives or figuring out what best suits your workforce so you can build on that and uh, support their well-being. So far, we've been implementing in multiple states with the support of uh, multiple organizations. And the training sessions have been successful. We have a a decent level of flexibility. So we have live training sessions, online training sessions. We can divide them into multiple sessions or we can compact them into like a one-day training. We also have the flexibility with our subject matter experts to uh, adapt the training curriculum based on the need of the country or the state where we're implementing. As you mentioned, some states, they struggle with hurricanes, other with mm-hmm. wildfires. So mm-hmm. we Flooding. try to adapt. Yeah, mm-hmm. we try to adapt uh, the content to really be contextualized to uh, the country or state of implementation. Th- this sounds like an amazing program. It sounds like one that would be good for like many levels of um, providers. I could see this being helpful for, for firefighters and EMTs and, yeah. uh, and, and even uh, police officers. This sounds like just such an amazing program. So where is your program currently working? Like I'm thinking in the United States or in our area. Uh, is this something um, someone can request? Is, I, I, like the, I heard you say something about it being online. Is this something someone could um, sort of individually, if they were a healthcare worker or, so, or such in our area, would they be able to, to connect with your training? How, how would that happen? So because this is a very well-needed initiative, we've been trying to expand uh, the work model that we have. Uh, So again, we've been working with clinics. As you mentioned, we've been trying to work more with uh, frontline workers, not necessarily healthcare workers. Mm -hmm. Uh, We we definitely, like we can uh, be connected with the interested uh, party, whether It's a group of healthcare workers, whether it's a clinic, and we can discuss details on the implementation of the session, whether online or uh, if we can actually hold the live training session in Mm. that area. Mm. So this is, uh, yeah, we've been working on a work model on like based on requests because sometimes uh, healthcare workers, they get together and they say like, yes, this is needed. Let's try to, uh, to pull this together. So yeah, we're, we're here to support whenever we can. Oh, that's great. So I, I would love for you to maybe even, if there's some healthcare workers who might be listening to this, what, what would you just say to someone who, you know, wants to make sure that they're taking care of their own mental health? And, and I like that the way that the training, by teaching people about how to care for their own mental health, I, I think it could also help them be very compassionate and understanding of other people who might come to them with those kinds of conditions. But what kind of advice or what kind of techniques could, people use um, themselves to just kind of help maintain their their mental health? Definitely, there's a lot of very simple uh, techniques that can be used on a regular basis. And I would just like to highlight that uh, it's it's okay not to be okay. Mm -hmm. So this is very important to acknowledge, to identify our feelings, to know that this is fine even if we're going through a bad thing. It's, it's okay to share. It's, it's, very, it's very good to stay connected with others and to talk about mental health. Uh, there's a lot of stress management techniques. There's a lot of like breathing exercises, mm-hmm. grounding exercises that can help and that they are readily available like online, YouTube videos. There's a lot of apps that can support that. Mm-hmm. But really being, being mindful of what our feelings are and not being harsh on ourselves and mm-hmm. judging ourselves especially again as healthcare workers, like you are the heroes, you are taking care of everyone around you. You need to take a pause and uh, internalize what's happening and really seek help whenever uh, needed. Mm -hmm. If it gets to be too much for for your own coping strategies. Thank you for this work that you're doing and and thank you greatly for joining us today, Rowan. We are speaking with Rowan Hamadeh from Project Hope. I'm Andra Hollenbeck. Uh, Please find more information about NAMI at NAMI Southern Oregon at our website, NAMI Southern Oregon org or email us at info at namisouthernoregon.org. This is Mental Health Matters. Thank you for joining us. You can find this and other podcasts at jeffersonexchange.org or subscribe to this podcast at Apple, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts.